So we've dealt with the cases when both signs are the same, plus, plus, and minus, minus. Now we're going to start looking at when they vary a little bit more. It takes a little bit more work, we just have to decide which factor needs to be positive and which one needs to be negative. And after you practice these, you'll notice there's kind of a pattern when we're asking the questions as we set these up. So the first one that we're going to try, we want to factor this trinomial. And again, we have a one out on the front, so we know it's going to be an x and an x. One factor of each, so when we do FOIL, first we get our x squared. But now, off on the side, we need to take negative 20 and break it up into things that multiply to negative 20, add to negative 8. Multiplying to negative 20, adding to negative 8. So let's just try some factors. 1 and 20, they're too big. It's not going to work, so we'll skip that. How about 2 and 10? So one of them needs to be negative in order to multiply to give us a negative. So I'm just going to give it to the 2. We'll try that. So when I multiply that, I get my negative 20. But when I add them together, I get a positive 8. And I'm looking for a negative 8. So what does that tell me about these factors? They are correct, but we need to reverse the sign. Okay. Another thing to ask, when I add it, is it more negative or more positive? When it's more negative, our larger term has to be negative. So that when we add it, it's still negative. So we need these two in the order, doesn't matter. You can have plus 2 over here, minus 10 over there. You could also switch the order around. Multiplication is commutative. Order doesn't matter. And we can always check if you're not sure that this is correct. Foil it out. So we'll check. First, look at me, x squared, outer plus 2x inner minus 10x, and last minus 20. So when we combine those two, we get our negative 8x that we were looking for. So we can always check after we factor to make sure we actually broke it down correctly. All right, so in this case, negative 20, the thing on the end, is the product of a positive number and a negative number. So we had both a positive number and a negative when we split it up. Since the sum of those two numbers, when I add them together, it had to be negative, the negative number has to have greater absolute value, like we were just talking. So when I added these two together, I got a positive 8 because my positive value had larger value. But if we reverse the signs, then my negative held more weight. And in the end, when we added them, we got our middle term that was negative. So it's kind of helpful to think in terms like that. So go ahead and try factoring this next one. Break it down. Factors that multiply to negative 24, add to negative 5. So the first thing, we know that it's going to be an x and an x, since there's a coefficient of 1 out on the front. And we need to take a negative 24 and break that up. So, things that are multiplying to negative 24, adding to negative 5. 1 and 24, 2, and two, too large still. Coming down to 8 and 3. Now, some combination of that will give me 5. The greater one needs to be negative, since I need to add it and have it be negative. So, 8 is negative, 3 is positive. And we can check. Multiply, we get there. Add, we get here. So, this is how it factors. And again, order doesn't matter. Multiplication is commutative. We can switch it around. And you can always check. Foil it out. Make sure you get back to the original polynomial that we started with. So looking at a few more challenging cases now that we can handle all of the different um, combinations of signs here. Looking at this first one, what's different? How is this one different than what we've seen before? In these guys, we have always had descending order, but it's kind of mixed around down there. So the first thing that we want to do is rewrite the order in descending. So we've got t squared plus 5t minus 24. Okay, and it looks pretty similar to our previous one, but now we're dealing with t's. That's fine. And the signs are switched around. So I need uh, multiples or factors that are going to multiply to negative 24 add to positive 5. 
And again, there's a one out on the front. We know it's going to be a T and a T. And we already have it written up here. But I know that 8 and 3, some combination will give me 5. And I need the larger term to be positive in this case. Because when we add them, we want to get positive 5. So t plus 8, t minus 3, or switching the order around. We can always FOIL it out and check. All right, part B. Now we have some larger powers, but our middle term here tells us how to break up our first two factors. So down here, uh, we broke it up into 1t and 1t, and it matched our variable in the middle, or how many factors we have in the middle. Same story up here. I've got x raised to the first power, so down here I've got x to the first, x to the first. x to the first power, x to the first, x to the first. So when I'm breaking up x4 into the first two factors, the middle term gives us a hint. However many factors we have involved in the middle term is how we need to split up the first two factors. Okay, because when I'm doing outer and inner, I need some combination of x squareds involved. And again, when we FOIL, x squared times x squared gives us x4. So now we want to break up negative 110 into factors multiplying to negative 110, adding to negative 1. So negative 1 is really small. So what does that tell us about these factors? They're going to be really close together. So, which are some that are close together? 10 and 11. Multiplying to give us 110, but we need it to be negative. So we got to figure out which one needs to be positive, which one needs to be negative. So I need it to be negative in the middle. So my greater term needs to be negative. So that when we add it, we get there. When we multiply, we get here. Again, order doesn't matter, so... Positive 10, negative 11. Okay. And eventually we'll talk about, hey, can we keep factoring? Can we go any farther with these special cases? But for now, we're just going to leave it here. And for part C, we kind of have mixed variables now. But again, the middle term is going to tell us how to break up the first and the last. Okay? Because... I know I'm going to need one factor of A and one factor of A in the front, because when I FOIL, I need it to give me A squared. But when I do my outer and the inner, I need a mix of A, B. So what does that mean for these two terms? We need to have a B here and a B there. So we'll have a mix, A, B, A, B. And then last, we need a factor of B squared. Okay, so we took care of all of the variables, so we don't really have to deal with them anymore. We just have to look at the constants, like we've been doing. So I need negative 21 to break up into things, multiplying there, adding to 4. So 7 and 3 will give us what we want. And which one needs to be positive, which one needs to be negative? We need it to add to be positive, so bigger one needs to be positive. Smaller one needs to be negative. Order doesn't matter. I'm going to put the 7 first and the negative 3 last. Okay. So that middle term is a good hint of how you need to be breaking up these things. Alright, so a few for you to try and take those next three factor and see what you get. So for the first one, again, we've got x on the front, coefficient 1. So we know it's going to be an x and an x. And we need to break up negative 6 into things that will multiply the negative 6, add to 5. So we need 6 and 1, and what combination of positive and negative? The larger one needs to be positive, smaller one needs to be negative. Order doesn't matter, you could flip it around. Part B, again, we need to break this up, and our middle term helps us out. I'm going to need t squared and t squared and constants here, no other variables involved. So when we do outer and inner, everything is in terms of t squared. So we need to break, break up 14 into factors, multiplying here, adding to 5. So we need 7 and 2. And what combo of positive and negative? Positive 7 
negative 2. Order doesn't matter, you could flip it around. For part C, the first thing that needs to happen, we need to change the order to have descending, so our highest power comes first, then we're decreasing until we hit the constant. Now it's in the form that we like. There's a 1 out on the front, I know it's going to be a t and a t. And we have to break up negative 18 into factors, multiplying here, adding to negative 3. So we've got 6 and 3. Some combo will give us 3. Which one needs to be negative? The larger, since we add it, and have the term be negative. And for all of these, if you think you've made mistakes, you can always foil it back out. Do the multiplication, check and make sure you get to the original trinomial involved.